This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. On this week's episode, he's going to be checking out the weapons of 2017 survival horror classic Resident Evil 7. Ah, the pump action shotgun. Thank goodness, I said to myself when I finally acquired this in the game. It's the best implementation of a pump action shotgun I have ever seen. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to video game firearms, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you'd like to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comments section below. If you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Our old favourite, the Glock, Glock 17-ish. You can see in the, the preview, there's a lot of texture detail to it, and there's quite a lot of accurate glockiness about it as well. All of the weapons in this game have been sort of idealised in a way, or stylized rather, from their correct look. So this is uh, Generation 2, Glock 17. Yeah, a lot of it's... Um, correct if you can say correct about about a virtual weapon it's missing the accessory rail on the front which is appropriate to the gen 2 so if i if i recall without um overly traumatizing myself this is a this is a policeman's pistol that you pick up and the the capacity is very low capacity is 10 rounds jurisdictions that that restrict magazine capacity in the states and elsewhere will limit magazine capacities to 10 rounds but needless to say law enforcement are not restricted in that way and so the the capacity should be 17 rounds but in terms of gameplay 17 rounds especially of the enhanced handgun ammo would make a lot of the other weapons in the game redundant So this game has two of the more iconic pistols ever invented and incorporated into computer games. We've seen the Glock already and now the uh, M19, I think it's called, is actually, for the most part, a Colt 1911. Whereas there are departures on the Glock model, the uh, 1911 has features from, I think I'm right in saying this, or if not, something similar, the Smith & Wesson Model 1006. So, uh, what I think they've taken from this are the curved trigger, pivoted trigger, rather than the sliding trigger of the 1911. The angle slide serrations. Point is, they have derived the 1911 into something that's slightly different. And I'm not sure why, because there's no copyright reason to do that. And the 1911 is such an iconic handgun. That's, that's going to, even people who aren't gun nerds are going to look at that and go, oh, that looks a bit weird. Even though I only played the first Resident Evil for about an hour and then didn't come back until Resident Evil 5, don't hate me for it, even I know the Samurai Edge pistol from the Resident Evil franchise. And so it's a, it's a as everyone will know, it's a tricked out Beretta 92. And this version has a mounted accessory rail that the original Beretta 92 doesn't have, but the modern versions do. And then you've got a sort of uh, an integral sound suppressor with a very modern shape to it. We see a lot of different ammunition types within video games these days and as well as the normal and enhanced handgun ammunition we've got in the final bit of the final level of this game this iconic pistol and it's firing something something different something that has a, a much greater effect thus turning what would otherwise be quite a weak weapon into something that can actually do serious damage with each shot. Now that has been experimented with, well, po poisoned ammunition certainly has. The Nazis and the Soviets both carried out experiments with bullets containing poison payloads. But that was strictly poison, that was not necessarily whatever these are. Long story short is none of these governments found that it was worth pursuing. So it's funny how, how a sort of throwaway sci-fi gameplay feature can connect with reality when you, when you start reading around the subject.
Ah, the pump action shotgun. Thank goodness, I said to myself when I finally acquired this in the game. And uh, luckily, it wasn't just the, the feel, the sound, the look of the thing that made it seem powerful. It actually is powerful in the game. And, you know, a headshot from one of these things will, will take down your typical mutated beast thing. And this the pattern of shot, although not as wide as typically depicted in games, gives you a much greater chance of actually hitting something vital. A load of uh, nine thirty-two calibre balls from a round of buckshot is pretty devastating. If the target is not armoured, or some sort of supernatural mutated freak of science, in which case you might have to fire twice. When we say pump action shotgun, whether we know it or not, we're probably thinking of the Remington 870, or maybe the Mossberg 500. They are by far the two most popular pump action shotguns in the world. And then this is in absolutely standard civilian sport shooting defense configuration. Standard length barrel, standard length magazine tube, and that limited capacity, but sheer amount of power just works so well in the game. And the ability to reassure yourself by topping up that magazine tube before you turn that next corner is great. It's the best implementation of a pump action shotgun I have ever seen. If I thought the pump action was a sort of levelling of the playing field, playing through this game, I should stress, uh, if I sound a bit melodramatic about it, it's because I was playing it in VR. So uh, the better the weapon, the better I felt. And a great upgrade to the pump action, weirdly, because in the real world it would be the other way around, was the over and under, break open, standard skeet trap, clay pigeon shooting shotgun. I, I abandoned Old Faithful, the pump action, and I went for, on the face of it, what would be a downgrade. So instead of having between five and seven rounds of 12 gauge with a pump action, you, you go down to only two rounds. But in the game, the same ammunition is somehow more powerful out of the over and under shotgun, which is, needless to say, completely unrealistic. But I don't think the difference in power was so over the top as to be immersion breaking. Now this one's a, a, a new one on me because I have yet to play any of the DLC for Resident Evil 7 and I must admit completely stumped me because although I, I know a little bit about the airsoft world I have not seen this particular gun. This is a purely airsoft design. It's almost a bit reminiscent, well quite reminiscent actually, of the FN SCAR rifle in terms of the receiver architecture and the lines of it but then the front end of it has super aggressive breaching shotgun look to it. Very sci-fi, so suffice to say, it is based on a real-world replica firearm, and it's not really a replica, because it doesn't exist in the real world of guns. So, quite an interesting video game weapon. I don't know if there's enough recoil being simulated in the way that's firing, or I guess uh, Chris Redfield just is a bit of a unit. I get the, the need for this in the DLC. It's almost like going from alien to aliens in terms of the, the volume of enemies it's going to throw at you and the need for a higher capacity shotgun that's quicker to reload. The capacity looks a bit high. 12 rounds uh, in a box magazine would make it very tall. Maybe they're staggering it. 10 round magazines are not uncommon on competition practical shotguns now and they do stick out quite far. I think 12 might be pushing it a little bit. This game is a really interesting mixture of expected Glocks, 1911s, pump action shotguns, and the unexpected. This being a good example of that. Uh, the PP-19 Bison, or Bison, Russian design, clearly derived from the AK assault rifle. The thing that really distances it from the AK though is the magazine system. As we see in the footage, it's a drum, but it's a helical feed drum. So it's a spiral of rounds. Hooks on at the front, latches in place at the back, as depicted. However, what it doesn't do is magically come off when you pull at the back of the magazine, because as correctly depicted in the, in the 3D model, there's an AK-style magazine release button here, or lever here, that you have to press to remove it. 
The rate of fire is a bit low. It's a bit sort of chugging. Uh, and it has a real meaty sound effect that really calls to mind a rifle rather than a uh, pistol caliber submachine gun. The report I, in game ought to be a little less punchy, I think. And the rate of fire ought to be higher. So the real thing is like 700 rounds per minute. This is more closer to 500, I would say. Here I come! You're going nowhere! One of the more horrific scenes in the game, the weapon that we see in use there is clearly not real. Um, it's a sort of improvised flamethrower, effectively. Someone has designed and made it themselves. I have picked up behind me a real-world flamethrower, the LPO-50 uh, Soviet design. Fairly classic backpack flamethrower. And the three tanks, which give you three shots. Fire as a weapon obviously has a long history, whether it's a burning rag on the end of a stick, Ripley's flamethrower in Alien. It's really more of a psychological weapon for, I, mean, I guess it, that's how it worked on the Alien. It's like instinctively a, uh, not keen on, on fire. As an individual weapon, as an inf infantry weapon, it's not tremendously effective. It has more of a psychological impact. Something that games don't really illustrate, this sort of does, is that you are not shooting naked flame, you are shooting burning thickened fuel and it sticks to the target. So we do we do see that. But somehow I don't think I've I think I've yet to play a game that doesn't quite convey the sort of how terrifying these these are as weapons. This is something that I haven't tried to find a parallel for because it's so obviously homemade or craft produced, as, as we say in this world. It's like an art, it's a bit of art design more than it is a practical weapon. It's got all sorts of bits on it that seem to be cosmetic, so it doesn't really resemble any real world weapon. In terms of function, break open single shot grenade launcher, it's a sort of M79 filtered through the lens of Jack Baker's twisted mutated mind, I guess, or whoever made it, possibly Lucas is supposed to have made it. Effectiveness wise, obviously being a grenade launcher, just like real life, it is considerably more powerful than a given projectile. Well, it's firing projectiles, but uh, with an explosive payload, of course. Fragmentation, blast damage. So it's something a bit more Fallout-like in, in your Resident Evil, I suppose. What the hell is this? One of their fancy toys? Ready for use. This is obviously not a not a gun of any kind, but believe it or not, the power fist glove thing from the, from this bit of DLC sort of has a real world parallel, and it's uh, sufficiently rare that we don't have one. The Sedgley fist gun was designed for the CBs, the military construction workers working on basically engineering, constructing things for uh, defensive purposes in the Second World War. A a glove was designed. It has a plunger trigger, so just like. Um, Jack is punching the, the, the monsters there, but he's using some sort of energy. What the Sedgley gun did was just fire a bullet. The enemy got close enough to your construction vehicle, but you, you didn't ha have the ability to draw a pistol and shoot. You'd literally just punch them, and it would hopefully kill them with that shot. Charging. If you'd like to support the work that we do here at the Royal Armouries, we have links in the description to how you can donate or become a member. Uh, we're also doing a series on our own YouTube channel on firearms. So um, do follow the link in the description and check those out as well. And I will see you again next time.